Hello, today is July 25th, 2023. It's around 5.25 p.m. And a few hours ago, I concluded my migration from Fedora to Debian 12. And what I show here is from a couple of days ago when I was migrating the files or backing up the files um, on the what was then the Fedora install and I was backing up the files to a USB flash drive right so I took all the files that I had on the uh, Fedora uh, system and I put them on a flash drive in preparation for transition into Debian 12 so this was not a difficult process to me because I do backups regularly with the Linux based environments and with my other environments the Windows environments as well because every two to three months or so I'm wiping the systems clean and I'm installing them uh, fresh right I find for me that's a very good practice on my personal desktops you don't necessarily have to do that with servers but with desktops I found that to be very very useful so this is the disks utility that you will find in many desktop Linux environments, right? The disks utility allows you to make a bootable flash drive, among other things, right? You can format hard drives, you can format SSDs, you can format USBs, and you can do a variety of things with those drive types, okay? In this case, I want to take the ISO file I downloaded off of the internet from the Debian website that has the image for installing Debian onto a computer and I want to image that to a flash drive so that when I boot the computer off of the flash drive it boots Debian into memory and then I can use that to install Debian onto the computer right and so that's what I'm doing here and I know the progress bar you see as it's going through looks uh, kind of quick. Uh, that's because I cut quite a few frames out of this video uh, just to get to the end. The process actually took a little bit longer. So um, this whole video was about um, an hour long. So I cut it down to about 11 minutes just to focus on the highlights. But now we have the flash drive set up that I can use to boot. Debian and then use that to install Debian onto the computer. So I'm going to wipe the computer clean now that I have the data um, uploaded, backed up to a flash drive, and then I'm going to switch to the Debian 12 environment, right? So here we are, Debian 12, right? And I'm in the same GNOME environment, right? The same GNOME environment. And I am going through the process of installing all the same programs and then some that I had in the Fedora environment, right? And because Linux is so standardized now, and many things are very standardized now compared to, let's say, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, the actual steps and processes and programs are largely the same in terms of like the, the most popular programs, right? And so I also wanted to make sure I I uh, looked at my OBS settings just right to make sure that I got a, a clear uh, uh, image production in recording this video of the desktop, right? And so, and I was surprised that uh, in Debian, I was able to just install OBS straight up uh, compared to Fedora where you had to uh, link in these other repositories or use FlatHub. I was able to just install OBS direct from the, the Debian repositories proper, right, without any uh, modifications. So I was quite pleased with that. I was able to get up and running faster with Debian than I did with Fedora. So on the key software that I use, which is about uh, 10, maybe 15 different packages of software, I was actually quicker with Debian than I was with Fedora, and that was a huge surprise to me. So if you've watched any of my previous Linux videos covering tools that I use in the Fedora environment, those videos in this video are 
pretty much indistinguishable. You cannot tell a real difference between them unless you're looking very closely. In those videos, I'm using the DNF command. Here, I'm using the apt command. And both commands do the exact same thing. They install software, they remove software, they allow you to search for software in the command line. And the way you use them at a basic core level is exactly the same. So mentally, I don't have to do anything differently, even though my muscle memory sometimes goes into pseudo space DNF when it should be pseudo space APT, but that'll be fine because prior to Fedora, I used a Debian based Linux environment for many years between 2009 and 2015 Ubuntu, right? So I used that and then I switched off of that to Fedora because at the time I saw Red Hat is more competent in the system D transition. But now that some things have changed in the Linux community and I'm more aligned with the vision of the Debian organization, then I decided, yeah, I'm going to go with Debian now that Debian is much more accessible on hardware, whereas before you couldn't really get Debian to recognize a wide range of hardware easily. And I didn't want to go through all the hoops and workarounds each time I needed to reapply Debian to a system. So now that the Debian organization and the core team that works on Debian has gotten that figured out, I'm like, cool, now I can just go right to the source, right? And not use the, the, the derivatives, right? Like Ubuntu and others. I want to use the source. And Debian is the source, right? And so that's why I'm so thrilled about this. Because now you've got a Linux distribution that is true, true, tried and true, all the way to the core, open source and free software, right? There's no if and buts about it. There are no doubts. And they're super aligned with the philosophy and the viewpoint of open source. All right, so this is the uh, what I call the application overlay, the main menu of program visual GUI programs that are installed. And you can right click on any of these icons and you can pin them to the dash. The dash is like the taskbar in Microsoft Windows or the dock in uh, Apple Mac OS, right? And so you can put icons down there that represent some of the GUI programs. And that's what I'm going about and doing now because I prefer to go down to that small, uh, you know, menu down at the bottom rather than scroll through pages of icons in the main application menu, right? Main system menu. So that's what I'm doing here is getting everything um, set up that way. And uh, so far, so good on that front. But what I want to do is make sure that I'm aware of the programs that I have installed and the programs that I need to install, right? And I'm sure I'm going to install some some more programs later. But right now, the focus is on getting the, the main programs that I use most often so that when I turn on the computer, let's say I turn on the computer later tonight, or over the next couple of days, I already have those programs installed. I have them set up in the, the dash down below and I am ready to go. There's some of the uh, programs I installed uh, a couple of hours ago. I got uh, Vert Manager for uh, virtual machines. I got Qt Creator, which I don't really use, but I plan on using in the future. I got a couple of programs, right, um, that um, I'm, I want to have ready to go, right? But the main ones that I want to have that are my daily drivers is LibreOffice Writer, LibreOffice Calc, right? So the LibreOffice Suite. I want to make sure that I have Inkscape and GIMP because I use those quite a, quite a lot. And so, so I made sure I had those. And then I was looking at uh, Evolution. Uh, Evolution came pre-installed in this environment. And I don't use Evolution. And that's um, simply because somewhere back in 2009 to uh, 2012 or somewhere in that, that time frame, I just looked at Evolution. I was like, you know what? I, I just don't really jive with that program right now. I'm sure it's a great program, but I've tried it for a little while, and I just didn't jive with it. But 
I saw more promise with Thunderbird, but Thunderbird kind of lagged uh, in terms of like the way the GUI was designed and, and so on and so forth. But the YouTube channel, The Linux Experiment, did a great job um, recently in showcasing um, the new design and direction that uh, the team for Thunderbird was taking with that. So I decided to install Thunderbird and I pinned it to the dash and I just wanted to launch it real quick just to get a quick glimpse of its UI approach and I saw it. And I, so right now I'm a little satisfied with that but I need to deep dive into that just a little bit. So um, life is good right now with this Linux based environment and again Linux environments right they come from different organizations and different organizations have different philosophies right and you want to use the one that's going to best match up with not only the philosophies of those organizations in alignment with yours but also how that organization approaches things from a management and maintainability standpoint as well as stability also this is the video that i'm cutting right now it's being generated in real time as you see the file size is quite large it's almost half a gigabyte because i'm going for something that is a little more crisp so Hopefully you enjoyed this walkthrough of Debian and my short um, process of migration. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Put a like if you uh, don't mind, and I will talk to you soon.